Um, bienvenidos a todos. Uh, vamos a grabar. We're going to record this for the folks who would like to watch later on YouTube but cannot live during uh, during our session. So, okay. Um, I had one game plan and uh, I kind of shifted the goalposts <laughs> um, as of yesterday a little bit just because of questions that people had. Um, because a lot of people had a lot of questions focused on issues of numbers and then grammar stuff. And um, so we'll do some of that. We'll see if you had questions about the reading and, uh, and you know what, any other questions? I always welcome that. I'm just leaning over because so I can see my next screen. Okay. Um, bueno, vamos a ver. Uh, um, uh, no vamos a tener un juego. We're not going to have a game to open tonight because of the number of questions that had come up. Um, however, uh, sin embargo, uh, I would like to task you guys with starting the game for next week. And uh, it will be a guessing game, but instead of you asking questions, I'm going to be the one in the hot seat having to ask questions. So what I want you guys to do, and you can kind of see if somebody wants to volunteer, we can see tonight. Um, I would like people to, uh, maybe three, three of you, um, to volunteer to have an item, a physical item for our 20 questions, 20 preguntas. Um, and you guys are going to have the item and, um, I will have to guess and I will have to avert my eyes and you folks are going to have to show on the screen because I have to have a way for everybody to know what it is to help ans answer the questions when I ask, but I will be the one in the hot seat having to ask questions. So if there's anybody who wants to volunteer, alguien quiere voluntar, um, ser voluntario? If anybody, yeah, yeah, Federico. <laughs> uh, no, no, he said Juanita. Well, okay, one of you. Something common, um, you know, just something common so you can show what it is uh, to the group. And uh, a person, a place, a thing. Uh, I think instead of a person, a, a thing. A thing. A thing. And if you do not have the thing physically there, a picture that you know, you could show of the thing. It has to be something you can show to the group so that you guys can help me, uh, can help with that process of me asking the questions and you responding to them. Okay. So, okay. Um, let me know later if you want to volunteer to bring something. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be anything outlandish or weird. It can be, you know, usually the more common it is, the harder it is to guess. Okay, uh, bien, um, aquí vamos, here we go, uh, empecemos, let's start. We are going to be working on two fronts because of the questions that came up this week. One will be a little bit more on numbers, numeros, because there are a couple of funky things um, with numbers that people wanted to review. Um, it's really only important for you guys to know numbers in terms of using them. Um, and, and there are some questions about some of these really high numbers, but you're not likely to have to talk about trillions and all that stuff. So mainly I'll be showing you some resources. Uh, we'll be watching one video. You can kind of do a quick mini quiz with yourselves on that. Um, and I'll show you the numbers resource. And the second thing we're going to go into is that uh, Federico had a question, which was a good question about, you know, there are all these words, all these um, subsets, um, all these parts of speech, all these parts of speech. And that'll be the other uh, big segment. Um, so numbers, parts of speech, what you should know about parts of speech, what you don't need to worry about with parts of speech. 
because you know you guys are not in fifth grade grammar anymore. Uh, but you know there are certain aspects of parts of speech that help you with decoding things you hear and see and read and other things where it isn't really essential for you to be, you know, the grammar Nazi, uh, <laughs> to know all the ins and outs. Um, okay. Uh, primero, oh, momentito. Tenemos a una persona más. We got one more person. Hola, Amy. Hola, Amy. Amy is connecting. Okay. Uh, bien, vamos a empezar. We're going to start. I'm going to pull up... Um, that article that talked about baseball, el baseball, it talked about, uh, and I'll pull it up on the share screen. We've got another person coming on in. Okay. Uh, bien. Okay. And I hope I have made this big enough. Pueden ver, can you guys read this? Okay, now can you read it? Is it too small? I can read my copy that I print. Okay, some of you may have a printed copy, some of you won't have a printed copy, which is fine. Um, es un artículo que, que habla de... Porque ahora... Uh, Las ligas deportivas, ligas deportivas son sports leagues, ¿sí? Las ligas deportivas están cancelando casi todo de la temporada. Um, con, con béisbol, con el básquetbol, y no sabemos qué va a pasar con fútbol americano en el otoño. Entonces, uh, El artículo se trata de, se trata de, is about. Se trata de otro tiempo cuando tenían un problema con manifestaciones, protests, ¿sí? Uh, y no había nadie en el estadio, sino los jugadores. No había aficionados. There were no fans. Había un juego, en este ejemplo en el, el artículo, un juego de béisbol, pero no había aficionados. There were no fans. ¿Sí? Las, a, a, las autoridades, los políticos, tenían miedo de las manifestaciones uh, después de la muerte de, de Freddie Gray, uh, con la policía, un, uh, decía así que Freddie Gray murió mientras estaba bajo custodia de la policía. Y entonces en, en Baltimore uh, no jugaron uh, algunos partidos de béisbol, uh, jugaron pero sin, sin, without, sin, aficionados, ¿sí? Um, y dice aquí, sí, el partido se jugó y se jugó no es, no es reflexivo. This is one of those fake passive voices. Uh, the game was played. El partido se jugó durante una época de problemas en Baltimore. Un hombre llamado Freddie Gray murió mientras estaba bajo custodia de la policía. Uh, mucha gente salió a las calles a protestar. Many people went out into the streets to protest. Las manifestaciones. Y manifestaciones no es manifestation. Manifestaciones son protests. Whenever you see manifestación, it means it's a protest, a march to protest about something. Uh, las manifestaciones se volvieron violentas. They became, they turned violent. They became violent. Debido a los riesgos de seguridad, owing to because of security risks, las grandes ligas de béisbol decidieron jugar el partido sin aficionados. And seen is one of those groups of parts of speech words we're going to talk about a little bit or refer to. Seen is a preposition. 
That's one of those words you probably should recognize as a preposition. Uh, entonces, dice, dice, ligas deportivas se ven obligadas a hacer cambios. Uh, uh, sports uh, leagues uh, see themselves as obligated to make changes, ¿sí? Uh, y empieza con una pregunta. ¿Un evento deportivo sigue siendo un evento deportivo? Uh, does uh, a sporting event keep being or continue to be a sporting event? Si no hay aficionados, if there are no fans. Esta pregunta es importante en este momento. Las ligas deportivas de Norteamérica tienen que hacer cambios. They need to make some changes. Esto se debe al rápido contagio del coronavirus. And when they say esto, they mean this as in the whole situation of having to make changes, right? Esto is, looks like it's a masculine word, but it's not. It's actually a neuter because it refers to the situation of the virus and all the changes that are involved with it. Uh, esto se debe al rápido contagio del coronavirus. Un encuentro de Deportivo con miles de aficionados, and here we see a number sneaking in. Uh, un encuentro deportivo con miles de aficionados, thousands. Uh, this is one of the rare instances where you actually make mil into a plural word, and so we'll talk about that a little bit, but keep this uh, example in mind. Thousands, not saying 6,000 or 7,000 or 10,000 or 5,000, but thousands. Uh, miles de aficionados podría aumentar el contagio. Uh, it, aumentar es increase. So uh, a sports gathering. Encuentro comes from encontrar, to meet or to find. So this refers to a gathering of people when they say un encuentro. Uh, so a sports gathering of thousands of fans could, uh, could increase the contagion. Algunas ciudades están prohibiendo los eventos grandes. Some cities are prohibiting, are forbidding big events. Esto afectará a las ligas deportivas. This will affect, and afectará is a future tense verb. And you'll notice future tense verbs keep the AR, the ER, the IR. When you hear a verb that doesn't knock off AR, ER, IR, it means it's either future or, con or conditional. In this case, it's a future. It will affect sporting leagues. Muchas de ellas ya pusieron en uh, pausa todos los juegos del resto de la temporada. Many of them have already put on pause all these games for the rest of the season. Europa hizo lo mismo. Europe did the same. Los partidos de fútbol en España, Portugal, Francia, Alemania, eh, Eslovaquia y Eslovaquia, uh, Eslovaquia. Uh, se han jugado en estadios vacíos, have been played in empty stadiums. Italia canceló todos los partidos del próximo mes. Italy canceled all the games for the next month. En Asia, las ligas de béisbol de Japón y de Corea del Sur también hicieron uh, cambios. So, baseball leagues are talking about Asian baseball leagues, Japan, South Korea, they have made changes. They also made changes. Retrasaron el inicio de sus temporadas. Retrasar es uh, to, uh, to postpone, to, to delay. So they delayed the start. And you see a word like our word initial. Uh, Retrasaron el inicio. They delayed the start of their seasons. Uh, a temporada is a season not like fall, winter, spring, but a season like a sports season or hurricane season or monsoon season. So temporada gives you that idea of tiempo, time, but it means a season 
when it's not a, a weather type. Well, I shouldn't say weather because huracan would be temporada too, but uh, not like uh, autumn, uh, spring, summer, fall. Uh, okay. Las ligas estadoun eh, estadounidenses han tenido que tomar decisiones. Uh, when you make a decision, you tomar, you take a decision. Uh, U.S. leagues have had to make decisions. Consideraron retrasar los partidos. They considered postponing games. También pensaron si podrían cambiar el lugar donde se juegan los partidos. They've also thought uh, about if they could change the place where the games are played. And again, that se juegan again is not uh, a reflexive like you think it should be. It's like a fake past tense where the games are played. Quizá los partidos tengan que jugarse sin aficionados and maybe games might have to be played without fans. And they use tengan, they use what's called this subjunctive there because we don't really know if they're going to have to uh, be played with fans or not. And when we're not sure whether an event is gonna happen or not, they use uh, a funny word that looks like tengan and that means subjunctive. It looks like a wrong and incorrect conjugation, but in fact, it's correct for subjunctive. And that indicates there's doubt as to whether that thing is gonna happen. Uh, and then they go on to talk about Hockey, hockey, hockey. We're going to go through one more paragraph and then we'll just see if you have any other questions on this. Uh, and the reason we're going to read the next paragraph is they've got a numbers example. Um, Los Tiburones de San Jose son un equipo de hockey. Uh, San Jose Sharks, our hockey team, son parte de la Liga Nacional de Hockey. Los tiburones juegan en el condado de Santa Clara en California. Condado es county. El conda, uh, condado co prohibió, forbade, prohibió, la, uh, prohibited, las reuniones de más de mil personas durante tres semanas. semanas. Uh, so, the county prohibited uh, gatherings, meetings of more than a thousand people. And notice how where we put in uh, a comma, you know, to separate the, the groups of three numbers grouped together, they kind of invert that. They use commas where we use periods and vice versa. So that's not 1.000, it's 1,000. Okay, we would put a comma in there in the way we write it in English. El equipo eh, ha estado jugando sin aficionados. The team has been playing without fans. And they, then they go on to talk about, a little bit about LeBron James. Um, ¿Tienen ustedes preguntas del artículo de la semana pasada o no? Nada? Okay. Yeah. Okay, you saw a couple, you saw a couple of number examples. We are going to go through a little video as kind of a warm-up, a review of numbers. It'll have you guessing some numbers uh, as we get to the part of it, but they're gonna go through uh, some of these bigger numbers that sometimes give people confusion. Um, so we will get that moving momentito and you just need to be listening now don't feel you have to take scribble furious notes Whoop. Perdón. got my stuff okay. más números primero vamos a repasar oh cero uno Momento. Wow. Okay. Hopefully he comes back. Dos. Ah, let's try again. Selección. Vamos a aprender más números. Wow. Primero, vamos a repasar. Cero. 
Let's try to get him to actually be moving. Primero. Wow. Okay. Hang on. Problemas técnicos. Some technical problems. Let's. You you don't see him moving, do you? I didn't see him at all. I just. Oh, you don't see him at all. Okay. Let's try this one more time. Other participants. Other classmates. No veil. No veil. Now we see you. Okay. Yeah. Now now you see me. I'm gonna try to get this fixed. Momentito, let's take it from the top, see if we can get this to work. Uh, um. Okay. A ver. Dos, tres, Ahora sí. cuatro, cinco, yes. seis, sí. okay. siete, ocho, nueve, diez, once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Ahora cada 10. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90, 100. Bien. Ahora, 100. 101. 102. 103. 104. 100. Okay. Notice how he's not putting an E in there. 105. 106. 107. 108, 109, 110, etc. 100, it's 100. 100, it's 100 and anything else. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, como 15. 600, 700, como 70, 800, 900, como 90, 1000, 1 millón, 1000 millones y 1 billón. Bien, escoge el número correcto. 154 154 222 222 450 450 1091 1091 803 803 624 624 2010 2010 345 345 512 
512. 3101. 3101. 30401. 30,401. Notice that in Spanish, people prefer the period to the comma when talking about thousands. Ahora, I'm going to say a number in Spanish and tell me if it's correcto o incorrecto. 467. 467. Incorrecto. Es 257. 891. 891. Correcto. Es 891. 328. 328. Sí, correcto. 328. 715. 715. Incorrecto. No es 715. Es 716. 573. 573. No, es incorrecto. No es 573, es 563. 123. 123. Correcto, es 123. 440. 440. No, no es 440, es 420. Okay, now I will show you the number, see if you can figure out what it is, and pause the video if you need more time and check the word bank if you aren't sure about how to say something. Por ejemplo. Te toca. Ciento cuarenta y nueve. Mil doscientos treinta y cuatro. Diez mil trescientos veinticinco. Trescientos setenta y dos. Nueve mil cuatrocientos noventa y uno. Seis mil ochocientos sesenta y tres. Veintiocho mil ciento sesenta y siete. 924.570. Bien. Let's go ahead and do the numbers one more time just to practice them and you can follow along. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 110, 120, etc. 
doscientos, trescientos, cuatrocientos, quinientos, seiscientos, setecientos, ochocientos, novecientos, mil. Un millón, mil millones, un billón. Bien. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about this video. Okay. A ver. Ah, a ver, muy bien. Okay. Um, and perhaps next week you would like something that will practice some numbers with partners. We can expand it to that. Um, I am going to share with you one other page which i will send this to you in a link um, numbers are always super useful when you're talking about prices uh prices of things because we kind of can't avoid it then uh this is a long uh a long 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 website we are not going to look at uh, all of it, but it will have um, some little um, audio snippets with it so that if you want to kind of listen to the way the word numbers are pronounced, you can do that and kind of test yourself against that. And so there are only a few things I'm going to point out about this. I am not quite sure if I'm able to. Can I zoom in? I can zoom in. Yeah, bien, okay. This will be a little bit easier for you guys to read. Otherwise, it's squint time. Um, you'll notice when they get into the 20s and even in the teens, 16 hasta 19, 16 to 19, and then all those 20s, they've got two different numbers. Remember, this isn't really a difference in the way the numbers are pronounced. It's a difference in the way they're written. So you can kind of ignore that. They can be written as three separate words, dies y seis, veinte y uno. But when people are saying these numbers orally, you do not hear three separate words. It will all sound like one. And so usually that, that first version where they do the trash compactor thing for 16, 17, 18, and then the 20s, that's generally the way if the people write it out, they will. I don't really care that you know how to spell these. They help you visually in knowing what sounds are in those numbers. But nobody is ever going to spell out these numbers. I mean, we don't, they don't, nobody does. You're gonna see digits, but of course you'll hear people speaking what they, you know, the name for that digit. So. You know, the writing of this, don't freak over, you know, do I combine it or is it three separate words? Just say the word. Uh, don't worry about accent marks because you're never going to write out these numbers. Do know that they are three separate words, 30 and 1, 30 and 2. So all those other two-digit numbers above the 20s go into separate words. You know, most of these are... They're derived from the single digit numbers. Cuatro turns into cuarenta, cinco to cincuenta, uh, seis to sesenta. The two that get confused here are sesenta with the two s, -s, -s, -s sounds and setenta. They're very close. One letter difference, and there that letter does make a difference because you know one has the t from siete one has the double s from seis and they drop that e sound in each one of those numbers uh the only one that's a little bit odd really in this is noventa because they don't use nueve and u e v e they use noventa it goes to an o it's almost like a stem change in reverse um and notice if you're using just 100, one, zero, zero, it's that shorty form, cien. But anytime I've got a, a number larger than zero in that last digit number, it's gonna go into the longer form of 100, which is ciento. 
which is what our word century comes from in Latin as well. And then the hundreds numbers are pretty easy. We take ciento, and we do make a plural to cientos, and we tag on in the beginning the number of hundreds. So doscientos, trescientos, cuatrocientos. The one that nobody, nobody, nobody likes in that group is the 500 because it's not cinco cientos. It's the great big, I'm breaking the rule number. 500 is quinientos. It takes that quin, like you hear in quince, 15. Uh, and it uses the quin number. So if any of the hundreds give you trouble, it's usually the 500 number. So one thing I want you to notice, and maybe when we do some practice next week, you can be conscious of this when you practice with partners, because I'll have an exercise for you to actually do this. Whereas in the hundreds, we do make the multiple hundreds plural. In the thousands, we generally don't. I can't tell you why that happens, it just does. But whereas you've got ochocientos, it ends in a plural sounding word. Thousand is always thousand, mil, 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 mil. It does not go into a plural form. You just tag on the number of thousands in front of it. Tres mil, cuatro mil, diez mil, veinte mil, twenty thousand. You'll notice in that baseball article, they did have a plural thousand, miles. And you only hear miles when somebody is giving not a specific number, but they're just saying thousands in general. But if you're citing a specific number, like 23,000, 50,000, it's never miles, it's just mil, always mil. Ciento goes into cientos to make plurals, but mil does not. Mil stays mil, okay? No matter how many thousands there are. And then the other question came up was getting into like millions and billions and all that fun stuff. You're not likely to actually have to look at prices like that unless, wow, you're way wealthier than I thought that you're buying some piece of land. You're buying an island like Johnny Depp does, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, un million, un million, a million, like you think it should be. And that one does go to plurals if you go to plurals of millions. Dos millones, tres millones, okay? The one that came up as a question is the billion word. The billion word is a thousand million. I know, that's weird. Now, are you going to buy anything that's a billion bucks? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Me imagino que no. I don't think so. But so that you understand, mil millones, a thousand millions is their word for billion. Okay. Un billón, which is a word, isn't really a billion, it's trillion. And again, unless you're talking about budgets of entire countries, you're not likely to use that word. But please do know that billón isn't billion, it's a false cognate, it means a trillion. And un trillón is a quintillion, and because my math is so horrible, I don't even know how many thousands it's got, except it's 10 to the 18th power. So, you know, those of you who are better at math than I, figure out how many zeros that is. Um, and again, you're not likely to use it. So the kind of false cognates will be bijon, trijon, but again, practically speaking, you won't need it. Para que sepan, just so you know, and we won't be using it, um, Next week, yeah, the, this little uh, page will remind you about decimal points and commas and how they switch places. And it will also get into ordinal numbers. And that's for a different lesson. Although to be honest with you, it's not very hard. Ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers, does it matter? No, you're gonna use the counting numbers the most. Ordinal numbers means the order of the item, like the first guy in line, the second guy in line, the third guy in line, the fifth building 
down the street. Okay, so anytime we got a TH at the end, like first, uh, uh, or well, not always a TH, but first, second, third, fourth, those are what they call ordinal numbers, meaning they're telling you not how many of a thing, but in, in a sequential line, where is it? Where is its spot in that line? In order, therefore, ordinal numbers. So those first, second, third, fourth, the only ones you need to know are first through 10th. Those are the only ones that you will hear people verbally using. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I'll let you look at those on their own. They are primero, segundo, tercero, cuarto, not cuatro, four, but cuarto, fourth, quinto, uh, sexto, septimo, octavo, noveno, décimo. After 10th, you will not hear people using ordinal numbers anymore. They exist, but nobody speaks using them. Which begs the question, why bother? So, you know, you might say somebody is the 12th in line, or this is the 20th volume of a set. Uh, and there are words for that, but people generally just use the number. So if they're talking about a king who's the 12th of his name, Alfonso, Alfonso the 12th would be Alfonso 12, Alfonso 12. They go back to counting numbers after the word 10th. Marilyn, what about like floors in a hotel? Would they use... Floors in a hotel, generally, yeah, you're going to hear people speaking using the counting number above 10. Mm. Yes. So if something has 20 stories, you know, which isn't, isn't unheard of at all, certainly in a skyscraper, um, you'll hear them use, you know, uh, 20, 20 pisos, el 20 piso, the 20th floor. So there won't be a 20th. Anything more than 10, go back to the counting numbers. Those numbers do exist, but they're very rarely used. And they're used like, for example, if you're numbering uh, volumes in a library, in a set of a series of 40 law books. And again, you're not going to need to use that. So it's just, you know, if you want to look at it out of curiosity, great, go for it. But I'll be honest with you, I've never had to use octogesimo, 80th, <laughs> so I don't bother. So if I, if you know, you ask me, how do you say 80th? Because that word does exist. I got to think really hard about it because nobody speaks using it. Para que sepan, just so that you know. But for those of you who are really, really curious, and those who want enough fractions, this, this page will give you everything you never wanted to know <laughs> about numbers. Although some of these, like double, triple, quadruple, sometimes people use that, especially doble. You know, double is a concept that we often may speak about. Uh, so, you know, a couple of those are useful. And percentages, knowing por ciento, por ciento, is their word for percent. Sometimes you hear this porcentaje, but por ciento is the one that most people are probably going to be most likely to use. Por ciento is the percent uh, phrase. Okay, I will send you that link. Uh, maybe next week we'll do a thing where you can do, bounce off some uh, uh, number questions in practice speaking using some numbers with partners. Um, so this is kind of the, the prep, the setting the groundwork for that. Tienen preguntas? Anybody got questions? Tienen preguntas? Si o no? No. No. Okay. Vale. Okay. Vamos a ver. Oh, yes. One. Oh, sí. Dime. Uh, are, numbers, are, numbers, are numbers feminine? Because it's siente uno, not siente un. Or siento uno, vente uno. Oh, uno? Like when you're tagging on uno? Right. Like, do you, do you drop and the they're always, And they're always feminine. 
Uh, 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 uh. Um, very rarely will numbers be feminine. Numbers will be feminine if, if, if you are using that number to refer to a feminine thing. Okay, por ejemplo. Por ejemplo, si hablo de, si hablo de computadoras. If I'm talking about computers, una cosa femenina, computadoras. And I want to talk about, you know, how much stock somebody's got. Uh, hay 50, hay 50, there are 50. Hay 50 computadoras. There are 50, 50, okay? Um, those words don't go into feminine, but if you get into the hundreds, they might. So um, 200 computers would go to a feminine form. The hundreds go to a feminine form. So 200 computadoras would be a thing. Now, if you slip and forget and say 200 computadoras, somebody will totally understand what you're saying. I mean, okay, it's but a when mistake. You're, but when you're it, counting, mm -hmm. when you're counting, you say uno, right? Right. Uno, dos, tres. You don't say un, dos, tres, or... No, uno, dos, tres. Uno. Uno, un is a shortening, uh, a shortening, which sometimes they do that when it comes in front uh, well, that's why we have un as an article, an indefinite article. Mm -hmm. uh, un perro, un gato, uh, un, un carro. Okay, so then it does shorten up. Um, but, you know, very, very seldom. Like, so words like, um, when you get to the numbers, like the 20, 30, 40, those are always whatever the number is. The only time you really get a feminine number where you're going to notice something goes feminine is in the hundreds. I mean, you might as una, una mujer, one woman, a woman. Yes. That's the other example. But if you want to say 50 women, 50 mujeres, also 50 hombres, 50 men. So, all those double digit numbers, 20, 30, 40, 50, they, those numbers stay the way they are. They don't change into a masculine or a feminine form. They are just what they are. Make sense? Uh, sure. It just, it just, you know, like I said, when you're counting, you're starting with uno and you have ciento uno and you have veinte uno. So that made me think feminine. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's generally, uh, you know, it, it's generally, you know, especially you, when you're talking about prices, it's always going to be used as a masculine for, thing for a price. But you know, if I, if I want to say 200 computers, it is technically dos, uh, 200 computadoras, 200 computers. Okay. Uh, so 21 books would be 21? 21 libros, right. 21 libros, 21 books. Because now we got, instead of 21 libros, you know, it would never be uno libro. So right. again, it right, it's that truncating, that cutting off that last O, oh, 21 libros. Okay. So it will do that. Okay. Más preguntas, sí o no? I'll leave that just as something for you to check out. And if there's some numbers on that list that you're kind of unsure of, it'll have a little, uh, a little loudspeaker icon that you can listen to how it sounds and test that out. But we'll do maybe some fun things with figuring out uh, numbers in groups together next week. Okay, está bien. Uh, the other burning question that came up was question about parts of speech. Ay, Dios mío. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to, again, kind of check out. Mm -hmm. When is it important to understand parts of speech? And when does it not matter at all? Because there is a school of thought that it doesn't matter at all. As a child, when you learn English, 
you don't really know about nouns, verbs, prepositions till you get to school, right? You learn to speak in a very natural way. And uh, uh, your mom, when you're three or four years old, does not tell you we need to make nouns, plural, honey, by adding an S on. But except for that oxen, ox word, it'll become the oxen. Yeah, you don't go through that. You don't go through that stuff till you go to grade school, right? So, okay. You can legitimately say that people who learn to speak from their parents, from their grandparents, don't ever really sit and think a whole lot about grammar. And therefore, neither should you. That's one school of thought. There is a great deal of validity to that thought in this sense. Sometimes when we get too heavy into grammar speak, you start thinking about words as separate little items. And that's not really the way we string ideas together. We think in blocks of words and we speak in blocks of words, okay? Um, so do they. It's just that their blocks of words will be somewhat different. So you need to shift the way you group your words together. So there's a danger in to going too deep into grammar speak. On the other hand, <laughs> the old school thought was that of course grammar matters. And the truth is that the real truth is somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. Grammar really matters versus grammar doesn't matter at all. Uh, the truth of it is little kids in their native language don't really learn the grammar rules until they go to school or start to learn to read. So my point of view on this is that we want to, uh, we want to use parts of speech only and, and understand what they mean only insofar as it helps us to rewire our brains to think in that other language. You follow what I'm saying with that? In the ending? Mm. Grammar, it, grammar is super helpful uh, with the verb conjugation thing. You can't get away from that because they do a lot more conjugations with verbs than we do. So there's no way to escape that, quite honestly. But verb conjugation aside, uh, grammar is only useful in that it helps you rethink how do I group these words and use them correctly so that somebody understands what I'm trying to say. So we're going to take a quickie, quickie look at what are parts of speech, just so you know, because this came up. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about what's important and what's not. Okay. 10 parts of speech. By the way, if you look this up, someone tell you there are seven parts of speech. Someone tell you there are nine. There are eight. Oh, this one says there are 10. Well, good God. So who's right? I don't know, but I can tell you these are important. Nouns. Nouns are person, places, or things. Okay, we pretty much know this one. So, a noun is something that takes up space. It's not an action, it's a thing, it's a person. It's, uh, well, we can say a place. A place is a thing, yeah. A uh, house is a thing. <laughs> it's also a place. Um, the thing that's important for you to know, to extrapolate, to think about, is that, shoot, I have to know about gender. Okay, uh, some languages don't have gender, but a lot of them do. Spanish, of course, all the Latin-based languages being such. So nouns, person, places, two things. Pronouns, in place of a noun. This is useful only in that, well, pronouns. Pronouns are itty bitty words, short words. Um, they're like the stand-in in a movie. If John Wayne was in a fight scene, he may not have actually done the high, uh, fighting. They would say, 
cut or pause or whatever they said as a director, they would bring in a new person to stand in for John Wayne to do the fight or whoever that actor was. And whatever it is that's brought in to stand in for John Wayne, that is, that's the pronoun. A pronoun stands in for a noun. It is a shorter way to refer to that person or sometimes a thing. Um, where this becomes very confusing for us is that Spanish has lots, well, and English does too. English has lots of different kinds of pronouns. The different pronouns have special names like direct or indirect or reflexive based on what their function is. So a pronoun may tell you who's doing something, in which case it's, we call it a subject pronoun. Yo, tú, él, ella, usted, a nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. Those are subject pronouns. They are a shorter stand-in to tell you about who does something. Who's the subject of the sentence? Who does the action? A pronoun might be reflexive, telling you that the person who does the action, it also comes back to them. A pronoun might be a direct object pronoun, meaning that that pronoun represents a person or a thing that receives the action. It does not do the action. I kick the cat, I kick her. Uh, her is receiving the action of kick. Her is not doing the kicking. I'm the one kicking her. So uh, knowing that there are different kinds of pronouns and they exist because they tell us something about who's doing something or who's receiving something who's doing action or who's receiving action. Uh, so the way you have to use those most commonly is subject pronouns, object pronouns that are direct, or object pronouns that are indirect, meaning you do something to somebody or for somebody. Verbs, it's important to know that this part of speech Verbs are action words, okay? And of course, this is done to death, but it's done to death because there are so many different verb forms, more than what we use uh, in English, okay? Walk, walks, talk, talks, talked, walked. But you know, Spanish, you've got all the conjugations, so that becomes a thing. Adjectives, okay. The only thing that's really important for you to understand is that adjectives tell you something descriptive. They are describing words. They tell you what something looks like, feels like, sounds like. They talk about a thing or a person. They paint a picture in your mind of the way it looks, the way it sounds, the way it feels, the way it tastes. They are descriptive words. And in Spanish, of course, that will become more complicated because when nouns are masculine or feminine, the adjective will also have to be masculine or feminine. So the noun is kind of like the sun and the adjective are all the little things that go around the sun. The adjectives have to make nice with <laughs> the sun they, they revolve around. The adjectives have to go into a form that is the same as the noun they are describing. Uh, they go into articles. Well, those are just the and a, uh, right? Uh, determiners, quantifiers, states how many. Those are oh, words like many, several, few. Okay. Um, we'll skip through that. All that kind of stuff just gets very, very fancy. Just know that any word that talks about a noun, whether it's the word the or a word pretty, it has to be in the same format, form, as the noun that it's describing, that it's talking about. Okay, adverbs. Adverbs tell you 
how an action is being done or maybe when an action is being done. Adverbs uh, take a lot of different forms. They might be time, they might be uh, that, that how factor, but they describe the action. They don't describe a person or a thing, they describe an action. Uh, the easiest way to describe them is that in English, we put an L-Y on some, but not all of our adverbs, right? Uh, happily, slowly, quickly. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they won't be L-Y, but the L-Y cor corresponds to mente. Okay. Conjunctions. I wouldn't get too worked up about. <laughs> Conjunctions are connecting words. Yeah, wow, that's so helpful, isn't it? Uh, conjunctions uh, fall into so many categories. I would say I wouldn't get all worked up about it at all. Just know, uh, better to know vocabulary than to fret over what's a conjunction. Better to know that the word but is pero. Okay, that the word or is o, that's conjunction. Okay, um, conjunctions really just gets down to vocabulary. So don't worry about that as a part of speech. Prepositions are kind of an important thing because often they tell you about place. Whether something is, is from a certain place, that it is physically next to something, that it is underneath, that it is on top of, okay, that something is inside of something else. So prepositions just know that they are generally location words. And interjections, again, I wouldn't bother with that because it's just a matter of exclamations. So it's just vocabulary. That's all that is. Okay. So, where are we going from here? From here, um, what's important for you to know is that your expectations of what's going to happen with these words depends on the new language's rules, which for Spanish means that verbs go into forms depending on who does the action. Who does the action, that's why we've got conjugations. Adjectives go into forms because the nouns they talk about determine that that word like green or fast or slow has to go into the form that talks about that particular noun. Um, what I want you to think more in terms of is something else entirely beyond um, beyond parts of speech. And that is, we have some wonderful, helpful snippets of words. Um, let's call them phonemes, which can really help you decode words when somebody's speaking to you and you don't know that vocabulary word. If you have a real good base of like prefixes and root words, you can often figure out what a word means without having to look it up. Or you can come pretty darn close. Uh, and that has to do with prefixes and root words. So I wanna show you a few things with that. Okay. And a lot of this will make sense. And it will kind of take you back to an English class, but in a good way. Can I make up to 200? Sure I can. Okay. So we're going to start with the idea of prefixes. They're teeny tiny. Uh, they're a snippet of a word. They're not a word often by itself. Uh, but these little phonemes can help you figure out what a word means. Mal, tagged down to the beginning of a word, is a prefix, and it means bad. And you already know that because you know the word for bad is malo, right? Malo, mala. 
Uh, and because we have words like malpractice in English, right? Um, something is malformed, something is uh, malfeasance, okay? Um, mal tagged on to the beginning of a word in Spanish is going to mean something is done badly. Uh, and again, I'll say, send you the link to this, but a word like malgastar, if you know that gastar means to spend money, malgastar is to spend your money badly, meaning you're throwing out the window, to waste. Uh, mal decir, to say badly, doesn't mean to mispronounce. Mal decir is a nice way of saying cussing. Mal decir is to speak badly, meaning cursing. Uh, maltratar, tratar means to treat. Maltratar is to mistreat, to abuse. Uh, malentender is to misunderstand. So uh, a lot of the, a lot of times when you hear a new word, think about sticking prefixes on the front. They can help you figure things out. And the opposite of mal is ben. Ben comes from bien or bueno, okay? And ben decir means to bless or to speak well of somebody. Beneficiar, to benefit. Uh, we're gonna come across, is it two? Yes, we're gonna put these two in a row. Des and this. These function in English the exact same way. They have a negative meaning, not. Cubrir is to cover, descubrir, discover. Okay. Uh, hacer is to make or to do, deshacer is to undo, to unmake something. Uh, Descomponer, to decompose, or sometimes descomponer even is used as, uh, very commonly, to break down, like an, an engine breaks down, descomponer. This will use the same thing, continuar, to continue, discontinuar. Culpar means to blame, disculpar is to not blame. To unblame, meaning you forgive somebody. Uh, pre, before, we have the same thing in English with pre, right? Uh, predecir, to pre-tell, that means to predict, to foretell, to predict. Um, con and com, we're going to look at those, they both indicate that together thing. And these all come from Latin, which is why we share a lot of these prefixes, or at least you can guess pretty well from using them what, what to do with words. So, uh, convivir, to live together. Contratar, to contract, to hire. Uh, com has kind of the same meaning. Componer, to compose. Poner is to put. Componer means you're putting things together, you're composing. Comparar, to compare. Combinar, to combine. Compartir, to share. Com means we're bringing some items together somehow. Uh, some prefixes like co, colaborar, collaborate, cooperar, cooperate. Ex, out of, extraer, extract, exportar, export. Uh, so, you know, some of these we share. We share those pre and ex prefixes. Inter, we share that one too, meaning between or among. Intervenir, to intervene. Uh, interpretar, to interpret. Uh, re, we share that prefix. It's an again. Uh, conocer, to know. Reconocer, to recognize. Uh, pasar to pass, repasar to review. Uh, unir to unite, reunir to reunite, to meet up. Uh, 
Here's one we don't share, sobre, over. We use sobre sometimes by itself, and then it can mean about or on top of. Uh, tengo un mantel sobre la mesa. I've got a tablecloth laying over the table. But um, sobre can also mean about something. So uh, sobre is stuck onto the beginning of the word to, uh, for example, the most common one is probably we take vivir, to live, and sobrevivir, to live over, to survive. Uh, sobrecargar, to overload or overcharge. Uh, sub, under. Subrayar, underline. Uh, contra, against, and we have this one where we share the same meaning, right? Uh, Contra decir, therefore, when I tag it in front of decir, contra decir, to contradict. Um, so, uh, and they've got a few other here's that are, are maybe not quite as common. But, but these kinds of, of things uh, which we use as prefixes can help you to decode words. Um, and we'll take this maybe a little step farther next week and get into the root parts. But it's helpful to know these prefixes because if you don't know something, you can usually guess pretty, pretty easily that mal decir means you're talking bad and it's like real bad talking. Cuss, 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 cuss. So, okay, bien. Um, I preguntas o no? No? Okay. Next week, what I want to do is have you do some number practice in smaller groups. So I'll send you that link with the number page so you can check that out. Don't, and it's going to be number, uh, counting number practice. So don't go all crazy on the how to say 40th volume of something. No. Don't worry about that because what you need to use are like regular number numbers. So We'll do some partner practice with that next week. Um, we'll uh, kind of take this prefix idea with roots a little more and we'll see how you can take a root of a word and morph it from a noun into a verb and how you can tell how we're changing words um, to change how they function. In, in the way we're expressing something, to change the idea of how we're using that word. It's, it's actually a pretty, pretty good skill to get acquainted with. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys want a little reading lesson for the week or no? See. See? Algo? Okay. Uh, I will send you a little um, reading lesson momentito. Uy, ay, 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 ay. Marilyn, you sent the mascota y corona? Yes, that's the one. Okay. okay yeah. Es eso. We have that. Um, and um, there are some words we're going to be able to use in there to talk about this idea of uh, roots. Uh, how you can take a root word and change it from uh, let's say a noun into actually a descriptive word or a noun into a verb um, and how to get comfortable with that. Uh, eso es. That's it. Eso es. Está bien. Está bien. Está bien. Tienen, de nada. ¿Tienen preguntas antes de terminar la, la clase de hoy? Uh, una, una pregunta. Uh, oh. One, uh, when I think about present progressive, <clears throat> am I equating progressive with, quote, I-N-G? Is sí. that where the progressive comes in? Sí. Okay. Yes. Present progressive. And we can check that out um, <clears throat> another time. Um, what is important to know is not so much what the verb tense is called, but when and why we use it. 
And the reason I say that present progressive is kind of an easy one because it very directly translates to the ing. Uh, somebody is watching, somebody is listening, they are hurrying, okay? But there are other verb tenses in Spanish where literally I've heard three different terms for the exact same kind of conjugation. And it becomes a word game. You know, unless you are a linguistics major, it doesn't matter that you know if something is called uh, el pasado simple or pretérito or yet another one of the many words for preterite. It's important that you know, oh, it's a past action conjugation. That's it. Uh, but yeah, we can do some of those as well. Um, sí, está bien. Okay. Sí. Okay. ¿Tienen más preguntas, sí o no? No, no, es bueno. No, nada. Ok. Uh, la semana que viene, la semana que viene, que viene, que is a conjunction, I'm tagging on the week that's coming, la semana que viene, the week that's coming. Uh, ustedes van a practicar con números y vamos a practicar con... Um, Los raíces, these, these root words, and how they can morph into different things to give us different expressions. Está bien. Magnifico. Ok. Hasta... Oh, ok. Uh, bien. Si, <laughs> si tienen más preguntas, díganme. If you have more questions, tell me, or more ideas of things you want need to explore, tell me. That's always fine. And... Um, It'll be a much more active, uh, you'll get into little groups next week. ¿Está bien? Está bien. Fantástico. Ok. Nos vemos, nos vemos el miércoles, ¿no? Sí. Sí, sí. sí. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Adiós, amigos. Adiós. Adiós, sí, nos vemos. Gracias. Gracias. Muchas gracias. Sí. Muchas gracias.